Hello, it's Professor Gilamet again, and today we want to talk about the linear regression, okay? And so in this video, we will explore the different aspects of linear regressions, okay? Um, and to do this, we need to start with some assumptions. So the first one is linear regressions really measure the association between two quantitative variables. And therefore, it's really important that both variables be quantitative and not categorical. Um, so when we have one quantitative, we use a histogram. But when we have two quantitative, uh, we use a linear regression. And so uh, this is a mistake that I see very often is like, maybe we're looking at some low birth weight uh, study data, right? And I want to create um, a plot of this data. And so I go and I'm going to do my regression um, and I'm going to select a variable like, oh, smoking. Smoking should affect the birth weight of a baby, right? And I click compute um, and I look at it and I go, wait a minute, it's a bunch of zeros and a bunch of ones. Well, that's because the smoking variable here is actually, do you smoke? No is a zero and yes is a one. And so this is actually a categorical variable, not a quantitative variable. Um, another mistake that I see is maybe not smoking, but maybe you use something like ID and you click compute and you look at the results and you go, oh, look, look at all of this and it looks like it's a line and man, this is amazing. Well, ID is not a quantitative variable, is it? ID is just an identifier. It's not really a variable at all. It's a it's a label. Um, and so this is a terrible uh, scatter plot because it doesn't meet the assumption of two quantitative variables. Um, and so that's really important. Now, the variable that we believe explains changes in the other variable is called the explanatory variable. I, I've said this in other videos. Um, mathematicians call stuff um, by very obvious names. And so when we think something explains changes, we're going to call that the explanatory variable. And then the variable we believe responds to changes in the explanatory variable is called the response variable because it responds to the changes. Okay, So here, the explanatory variable is going to be graphed on the x-axis and the response variable is going to be graphed on the y-axis. So I'm going to go ahead and flip over to StatCrunch again. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to some uh, data about cigarettes and their effect on lung, kidney, leukemia, and bladder cancer. So these are um, four different types of cancers and how are they associated with um, the cigarettes here. And so to make just a scatter plot, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on graph and I'm going to go down to scatter plot and I'm going to click on it. And my explanatory variable is the x variable. And so I'm going to select what I think explains um, changes in the cancers. And what explains changes in the cancers? The cigarettes explain changes in the cancers. All right, and then for the y variable, uh, I want to look at lung cancer. So the lung cancer should be responding to the cigarettes, and the cigarette should be explaining the lung cancer. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to scroll down here and click compute. And what I get is this uh, scatter plot here, and I actually don't want to make it too big. Um, I've got this scatter plot over here. And so let's look at this guy right here, okay, on row 44. All right, and so what I'll do is I'm going to go over to, uh oh, I'm going to go down to row 44 and I'm going to click on it. And you can see that cigarettes, the amount, number, average of cigarettes sold is 2,804. And the amount of lung cancer in the population is. 15.92 um, probably percent of the population um, and so where does that point on the graph and so if you look on the scatter plot
I just I want to adjust it so you guys can all see it. There it is right there. What I did was I found 2804 on the x-axis and I plotted it at 15.92 on the y-axis and so that's where that point is right there. And so I did that for each of these points, right? Um, I could find 2286, here's about 2286 and 15.3, so that's a little higher, ooh, wait, let's see, 2206, there it is, there's the 2286 and the 1553, so this is Wisconsin right here. And so each one of these is going to be graphed um, according to how many cigarettes and what amount of lung cancer there is, and it gets plotted on this scatter plot. And so you can plot all of the points for all 44 um, states that we have represented in this data. Okay, and so the explanatory is graphed on the X and the response is graphed on the Y. Once we've graphed the data on a scatter plot, we can describe it much like we did histograms. Remember with histograms, we had shape, center, and spread that we used. For this one, we're going to have direction, right, and then form, oops, way down at the bottom, and then of course last is going to be strength, okay? And so for direction, the direction of the data is either positive or negative. You can tell because the data will follow a general pattern of increasing as the explanatory variable increases for a positive direction. So what does a positive direction look like? Well, this is a positive direction. As the amount of cigarettes um, increases, the amount of lung cancer we see in the population increases. It's not perfect, right? There's some uh, spread around the edges. But if I were to draw a line through that, right, um, it would be a slope with a positive, a line with a positive slope. I'm sorry, it would be a line with a positive slope, all right? Now, um, I also had uh, this eBay regression data that uh, I found, and so I was looking at price and bids, and I thought, well, you know, what if the price actually affects the number of bids, right? And so as the price changes, the number of bids is going to respond to that. If the price is really high, how does that affect the bids? And so again, I'm just going to compute a nice scatter plot. And here what you can see is a generally negative pattern, right? What's happening is it's going down from left to right. Now you've got some fan to the data out toward the edges, but in general, as the price increases, the line is going uh, down. The pattern is negative. The direction of this data is negative. All right. So on the other hand, the data will follow a general pattern of decreasing as the explanatory variable increases in a negative direction. Okay. And so I think one thing that is really important is the explanatory variable increases in both of them. But it's a positive when the pattern is increasing and it's negative when the pattern is decreasing. And it's like we read from left to right, right? Just read the data from left to right. Now, I'm gonna pause briefly to talk about strength of association. Um, if you look at the data and there doesn't seem to be a clear positive or negative direction, right, which is what we're talking about, it could be that there is little to no association between the variables. So when the association is very, very weak, right, or there's no association, um, it could be that you can't really tell whether it's a positive or negative direction. And so what I'd like to look at is the birth weight of babies. Oh, wait, graph, scatter plot. Um, and let's think about the age of the mother and the birth weight of the baby. How does the age of the mother explain the birth weight of the baby? And when I click compute, and I look at it, right, you're like, is it going up? Well, not because of that one point. If you take that one point out, um, you're going to have a pretty, like, is it going down? Is it going up? Is it, it actually looks like it probably would be a flat line running through the middle. And this is what 
no association would look like where there isn't a clear positive or negative direction. Okay. So this brings us to form, the form. So is the pattern a line or is it something else? Okay. Now you can use a linear regression for data that appears straight enough. Um, and when we look at the equation and how to calculate it, we're going to look at some specific assumptions and some tools for making sure that it is straight enough. But for right now, just use your eye and judgment. It could be that the data has a relationship that's nonlinear. And how to handle that is for another video. But I do want to take a minute um, just to take a look at what that would look like. So what I have here is some time and temperature data. And so if you graph that in a scatter plot, we would say that as time passes, um, the temperature is going to respond to that. And I'm just going to compute that. And if you look at this um, graph, right, it looks like maybe that's not really a straight line. Um, and so if we actually go ahead and do the regression on it, um, where I do the time, oops, time and the temperature um, and compute it, then what you can see is there's clearly data above at the end and then it falls below and then it goes up again because really this is a curve and this would be better um, served with something other than a line and so that's what nonlinear data um, might look like okay and so that's really important to keep in mind um, and then of course you have the strength right and I alluded to this earlier how strong is the pattern um, of the data are the data points all very close to a line you would draw or are they more scattered, right? So the stronger the association between the variables, the stronger the pattern will be. Um, and so we'll measure this precisely when we calculate the equations. But for right now, you can just use the following descriptions, right? Like no association. And we saw that, right? When we looked at the um, birth weight and age, this was basically no association. Um, and then we had weak, a weak association, and we saw that with the um, eBay data. When I graph the eBay data, price versus bids, um, what you can see is a very weak negative relationship um, as it goes down from left to right. And then you could have a moderate association, okay? And so if we look at the cigarette data again and the scatter plot of the um, cigarettes versus um, lung cancer and you compute that that's that's moderate to strong right you've got some stuff that's influencing it but that's all going to be fairly close um, to the line and then um, and then I found this test text messaging activity um, and if you look at this um, data right here this is text messages sent yesterday and then this one is text messages received yesterday. And so you've got this whole sent and received thing. Um, now I happen to know that uh, 20 is an outlier. So what I want to do is go to that row and delete it before I do this. Um, but if I actually go ahead and look at the graph here, the scatter plot, and I say, hey, what if the text sent, right? I the text messages received responds to that. So if I send a text message, um, the response then is to receive one, right? And so let's see how that works. And if you look at that, that is a strong association. Look at how close all of those dots are um, together, even without one of the outliers that I took out. And these, this is probably an outlier, and this is probably also an outlier, and I don't really like this one either. Um, and so if I wanted to, I could go ahead and let's see what happens if I delete those. So I'm going to go ahead and um, delete those three. And then I'm actually going to do the regression so you can actually see the line for the messages sent um, and received through there. And there it is. And look at, look at just how close to that line of best fit um, those text sent and received are. I mean, that's pretty strong association that if I send a text, it's going to be responded with a 
received text, okay? And so those are just different ways of describing the strength of the association there, all right? And so hopefully this really helped you um, to be able to describe uh, linear regression. We'll get into the um, calculation and what the uh, slope and intercept and R and R squared mean in another video. Uh, and I hope that makes you happy.